Yes, Shong, after learning three simple steps, you will be able to read and write most Hmong words pretty much right away. This method is for someone who already knows how to speak Hmong and knows how to read and write English. I learned this when I was a freshman in college, you know, when I was full of inspiration, really enjoyed writing Hmong songs, and um, would try to write Hmong words using the English spelling. The problem was when I tried to go back a few weeks later to finish the song, I couldn't make out some of the words that I wrote. So I went home one weekend and finally asked my father, who was a teacher in Laos back in the 70s, to teach me to write Hmong. He was so excited, he sat me down right away, and literally within minutes, I was able to start writing Hmong. My younger brother, which I'm excited that he asked me, to teach him how to write Hmong. And before making this video, I watched several videos on YouTube, but they all seem kind of complicated. And so I decided to make this video for him, as well as anybody out there who'd like to learn how to read and write Hmong. I am not tech savvy uh, or a graphic designer, so there are no pretty pictures, but I promise you, you will learn how to read and write Hmong in three simple steps. Before I get to the three simple steps, it'll help you if you have an overview understanding of the Hmong language. Just three simple points. First of all, the Hmong language is a tonal language. For example, when you say the English word yo-yo, even though the first tone or the first syllable of yo-yo has a rising tone and the second syllable has a falling tone, it's spelled the same way. Versus in the Hmong language, each tone is spelled differently. Yo would be spelled Y-A-U-B, Yo would be spelled Y-U-A-M. So basically in the English language, you just have to be able to recognize that word and memorize the tone of each syllable versus in the Hmong language, the last letter of each word is what we call the tone letter or tone marker that tells you exactly how to pronounce that word. Almost all Hmong words contain a tone letter or tone marker with just two exceptions and I'll go over that in a little bit. Secondly, most Hmong words are one syllable, which makes the Hmong language very, very easy to learn. Um, some words contain two syllables, for example, baekyo, but um, if it's more than two, many of those words are borrowed or adopted from other countries or, and languages. Thirdly, most Hmong words contain three parts, the consonant, the vowel, and the tone letter or tone marker. Some words may only contain a consonant and a vowel, a vowel and a tone letter, or vowel only. For example, the word ba, p is the consonant, a is the vowel, b is the tone letter. And the word ba, p is the consonant, and a is the vowel with no tone marker. And that goes to one of the exceptions in point number one. The word a, mi a, or baby, a is the vowel, and b is the tone letter with no consonant. And very, very few words are vowel only, such as in the word o. Now that you have an overview understanding of the Hmong language and spelling, let's learn how to read and write Hmong by following these three simple steps. Remember that most, but not all, Hmong words have three parts, the consonant, the vowel, and tone. Therefore, all you have to do to start reading and writing Hmong is to learn each of those three parts. But it's really important or much more simple if you learn it in this order. Step one, get familiar with the 13 vowels. Some references will say that we have 14 vowels, but that's for green Hmong and white Hmong only has 13. And you will see that in chart A and chart B, which I'll show you later. Step two, which is the most fun and challenging step, memorize the seven tones. There are seven tones in the white Hmong and eight in the green Hmong, and that will be in chart C. And once you memorize the tones, you must practice it with every one of the 13 vowels. Once you get this step down, reading and writing Hmong will be a breeze. Step three, just start writing Hmong words and getting familiar with the consonants. Most of the consonants are, uh, they sound just like the English consonants, so that part's really easy. If I can figure out how to attach these charts at the bottom of this video, I will do so. If not, just message me and I'll be more than glad to email them out to you. This is chart A, the vowel chart, starting with the single letter vowels followed by the double letter vowels. As you can see, the first five is A, E, I, O, U, exactly like the English vowels, except they're pronounced differently. For example, A is pronounced A, like in the word Ali or the Hmong word Ba. 
the column on the far right is just the English translation of the Hmong word in case you forget what the Hmong word is. And this helped me a lot in the beginning until I got used to how each vowel sound. The vowel E sounds like a long A, like in the word Amy or Bay. I actually sounds like a long E, like an even or E. O sounds like owl or aw, and U sounds like lu or hlu. And W sounds like the Hmong word u. And the double vowels, starting with AI, actually sounds like a long I, like in the English word I or a hi. AU sounds like ow or like in the word ow or how. AW is like a, uh, like in the Hmong word da. The double E sounds like ang, like in the word sang or nang or kung. IA sounds like ia, like in the word kia or shia. Double O is mong. And UA sounds like oa, like in the word mua. Chart B is all the 13 white Hmong vowels in alphabetical order. I'm not going to go over this chart. It's just more of a reference in case someone likes to learn the vowels in alphabetical order. Now that you're familiar with the 13 vowels, let's move on to step number two, memorizing the seven tones. And this is where the fun begins. Now to accurately read and write Hmong, you must memorize the seven tones and then repeat the seven tones with each of the 13 vowels. So if you think about it, 13 vowels, times seven tones each, that would be 91 what I call unique pronunciation syllables. All Hmong words will end in one of these unique pronunciation syllables. So your whole Hmong vocabulary is right here on this chart. All you have to do is to add a um, consonant to it. So don't let the number 91 overwhelm you because if you can count it, you can definitely conquer it. And actually that fact is another reason why it's easy to learn how to read and write Hmong. So let me just give you a quick example. For example, the word, the English word depot, D-E-P-O-T, unless you know that word, that the T is supposed to be silent, it could easily be mispronounced as depot. Well, you definitely will not have that issue with the Hmong language. There's only one possible way to pronounce each word in Hmong because of the tone letter. So let me just go ahead and explain this chart a little bit before I get started. At the very top, you will see a question mark the backslash, and that's just for someone who's visual, that will help you memorize how those tone letter is supposed to sound. And though it's just, though it's a letter, it's actually, you don't pronounce that letter, it's just more of a tone marker. So the seven tones are B, M, J, and that's in red, V, the absence of a tone letter is actually a tone, S, and G. It'll make more sense when we add it with a vowel. The vowel A with the tone letter B has a question mark sound. Like, for example, the word ba. So that would so that vowel or that unique pronunciation syllable sounds like a. Ah. AM is a. Ah. It's a falling tone. AJ is a, ah, a rising tone. A V, A, ah, it's like an up and down curb tone. A by itself, it's just a smooth, even tone. A, ah, A S, A, ah, and you have to open your mouth in this. So, A ah and A ah are different. A G is A, ah, like in the word. Ah, that's the last tone. So that word kind of helps you remember too that that's the last tone. So this chart is designed to help you memorize how the vowel and tone is supposed to sound like. When you start out, you might not remember that PAB is ba. That's why there's this little space below it to give you um, the opportunity to write what the English translation is. And P-A-M is ba. So that's just a chart. I filled in the first three lines and the first vowel with the first tone all the way down the chart. But you really need to do this in order to learn it because there are some words that you use more frequently and those are the words that will help you memorize 
these unique pronunciation syllables, which is the vowel with the tone. So when I first started out with um, trying to memorize the tone, it's more like like if you're a musician, this would make this would be so much easier for you. Kind of like do re mi fa so la ti do. So you would say ah 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 ah. And first, when you start saying this, it's gonna sound weird. And if people hear you say, they're like, "What the heck is she doing?" But trust me, this helps a lot. Again, if you're a visual person, you know, A B is kind of like a question mark, like ah, uh, like up a knee ba. A M ah, uh, decreasing tone. A J ah, uh, increasing tone. Ah. Uh, with the tilde mark, it's kind of like an up and down curved tone. Ah, uh, even smooth tone. Ah, uh, really open your mouth with the at symbol. And ah, uh, with exclamation mark. So that, if you're a visual person, that may help you. If it doesn't, don't use it. So I'm going to give you another example here. AI with B is I. A I am I, 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 I. A U is O like the word dog O, 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 O. So far, we've only practiced the first few vowels with the seven tones, and I am going to create a second video only on chart C to help you memorize the tones and the unique pronunciation syllables. Once you start completing chart C in step two, you will realize how easy it is to write Hmong. All you have to do is add a consonant in front of the vowel in the tone letter. So start practicing right away. Continue to hum, sing, and say the seven tones and practice, practice, practice. I did not include a spreadsheet with all the Hmong consonants because there's a lot of resources available online already. All you have to do is Google it, print it out, and continue to practice. I'm really, really excited to hear your feedback and see how these three steps work for you guys. Have fun, and I'll see you on the next video.